Now, once you begin to believe that you're creative and that you have what it takes, then you get to move on to number two. The second thing is we got to work the make it remarkable process. You want to work the make it remarkable process. Now, there are a couple things you're going to like about this process. First of all, obviously, it's going to be simple and easy. We all like that. But the second thing is that it's expandable and contractible. And what that means is that if you have to work on a big project, let's say you're doing a customer service initiative at work, you can expand it. Or if you're trying to figure out how to make a more remarkable meal tonight, you can contract it. It doesn't make any difference. You expand and contract it. Well, they're always the same five steps. It never alters. If you work these five, it'll always work. Always works. All right? The last thing I think you're going to like about it is that I learned something when I was pastoring for all those years. And that is that if people can't remember something, they won't use it. I told you it was really intelligent. So I decided that when I came up with each step, I was going to come up with the name of a person and tie the person with the principle so that you could not only remember it more easily, but you'd also remember what you're supposed to do in each step. So here we go. Number one, the first step is this. You want to ask questions like Picasso. Ask questions like Picasso. And those of you who aren't writing, you have um, notes in your program. You can just write along. But you want to ask questions like Picasso. Now, some of you might be asking, well, what's the Picasso question? Good question. Here's the Picasso question. How can I do this differently? How can I do this differently? This is why the Make It Remarkable process always works, because the very first thing that you do automatically make sure that you will not do the same thing, right? If the first question you ask is, how can I do this differently, you cannot buy into sameness, right? Now, the reason I picked Picasso is because Picasso perfectly demonstrates this principle. Let me show you. Back in 1895, early Picasso. It's okay. It's not bad. It looks kind of ordinary, actually. It looks like a lot of paintings that other painters would do. But in 1907, Picasso became famous. Picasso became famous because he decided to do something differently. We now call it cubism. He decided that he wanted to take a three-dimensional object and put it on two dimensions. He wanted to be able to show the back of the head, the side of the head, and the front of the head at the same time. He wanted to be able to interchange body parts. He wanted to be able to change parts from animals and human beings. And so in 1907, he became famous with this painting. Completely different than what he saw before. Now what I find fascinating about Picasso is take a look at this painting from 1910. How about from 1925? How about 1931? How about 1951? What did you notice about all those paintings? They weren't the same, were they? Radically different styles. All of them different. All of them unique. See, Picasso didn't just come up with something remarkable and then keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. He came up with something remarkable and then he changed it up and he changed it up and he changed it up. That's why my favorite Picasso quote goes like this. He says, to copy others is necessary, to copy oneself is pathetic. You copy others when you're learning. You copy the grandmasters if you're painting. But then when you come up with your own thing, you don't keep doing it over and over and over again. You keep changing it up or else you're pathetic. So if you go home tonight and you want to make a more remarkable chicken dish, the first question you're going to ask is, how can I do this differently? There you go. So this is Crowd participation part here. Okay, so if you're going to go home and you want to have a more remarkable date this week, the first question you're going to ask is, how can I do this differently? differently? See, there we go. See, much better than the early crowd. You guys are awake. This is good. Uh, so that if, you want to, if you're at work and you're working on a project, you want to create a new uh, HR policy. The first question you're going to ask is, how are we going to do this differently? It always works. It's so simple. You just start with a Picasso question. Now, if I were to say to you, how do you create something remarkable? A lot of you still are going to be stuck. So I'm going to take something very ordinary, and I'm going to show you a simple process that you can use with just about anything to begin the process of thinking more creatively. I'm going to take something as ordinary as mac and cheese. Now, how many of you, when you think of mac and cheese, immediately think of a blue box with elbow macaroni, orange dust, which is not cheese? <laughs> You then add milk and you add butter. Okay, for most people, that's what mac and cheese is. You ask, make a remarkable mac and cheese, and they go, oh, I don't know how to do that. What do you got? You got elbow macaroni, orange dust. So how do you get out of that? Well, one thing you can do is you can take the component parts of something and ask, how could I do each one of these parts differently? So in our illustration of mac and cheese, you got the four parts. So pasta, are there some other pastas other than elbow macaroni? Answer, yes. Okay, how about penny pasta? How about gemelli? How about farfalle? How about rigatoni? There are all kinds of other pastas. All of those could be mac and cheese. They could? Yes, they could. And much better, thank you. 
Okay, now when it comes to cheese, you can use something other than orange dust. You could use gorgonzola cheese. You could use mozzarella. You could use uh, Parmigiano-Reggiano. You could use Pecorino Romano. You could use even French cheeses. Uh, you could use American cheeses. There are all kinds of cheeses. You could use a combination of all those cheeses. It, it, it'd be fine. It would still be mac and cheese, okay? Now when it comes to the liquid, you could use milk. You could use half and half. You could use whole cream. You could use chicken stock. You could even use wine. Some of you just decide you're going to have mac and cheese tonight. <laughs> Okay, you could add other things besides butter. You could, in fact, add sausage. You could add mushrooms. You could add cilantro. You could add garlic. You could all kinds of things you could add, and it would still be mac and cheese. And it would be much better than the thing in the blue box with orange dust. So can you be remarkable? Can you create remarkable? Absolutely. It starts by saying, how can I do this differently? Then use something like this to get your mind going. Come up with as many ideas as you possibly can from yourself, and you'll find that it's worth it. Now, by the way, if you don't think remarkable is remarkable, uh, let, me, let me just share this with you. Three of the top ten most expensive paintings ever sold in the world are Picasso's. The last one was sold in 2004, blue, uh, Boy with a Blue Pipe, for guess how much money? $104 million. Some of you just decided, I want to be more remarkable. There we go. That's number one.